make sure that we all we should be yep we are i'm just sharing it around to the social medias i even got the notification this time nice what's amusing to do you me not get it sometimes uh sometimes i don't get notifications for lives What's really amusing is oh, when wow. I get a notification for my own live about halfway through. I get that all the time. It's bizarre. Or like an email for it. It's weird. Like, um... That's odd. I'm sitting here and in my own live and I'm like, why is no... Oh, because I just got the notification. And then it explains why everybody pops in at one time. Um, right, yeah, exactly. Alright, so that's all set. I just sent it to Twitter. Cool. We should be getting some people, hopefully. All right. What's up, guys? Apple Monster here. And as you guys can tell, I'm joined by Michael Pepper and Chris from Battery Power. Um, I actually did not post your link. I don't know if I posted your links in the description. I'll check that right after um, cool. we, we finish up. Um, that's one thing I forgot to to do, I think. I'm just going to put um, my while we're going live. <laughs> Good sure, time. Hey, whatever, you know what? <laughs> I, think, I think this is going to be one crazy yet funny stream. So, you know what? It's It's... Out of normal, I mean, we we need something to go go here because honestly, the time we're living right now, I think a little comedy isn't bad for a tech channel right now. <laughs> so, how are you guys doing, Chris? Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks, um, thanks. I see good. you. And it's good to be Michael. here. Yeah, you, you notice what's on that Friday all thing. The time. Yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of bother him a little bit. <clears throat> and then he and then he comes up with interesting <laughs> ideas about stuff and then I don't know the next thing I know we're we're recording something so yeah it's um it's good to be here though it's good thanks for the invite thanks for uh, having me on it's good to uh oh it's good to see tech 702 in the chat um but yeah awesome. it's cool looking forward to uh looking forward to talking some iPhone 12 and and of course uh, if there's if there's such a thing called comedy that I can actually offer I will do it while I'm here I don't that's not usually why most people find me, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> um, so I feel official now. What, that what, I, have, what? I have the whole corner of tech. You know how people do that in the back of their videos. Hot. It's all you know, yes, set up. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I actually have my background in tech right here, too, which is awesome. I have mine also. Mike, what's up, man? Just, uh, you know, I'm waiting to fill it up. <laughs> I, I, just, awesome. I, I had to sell all my tech to afford sound treatment so that there's no echo in this space. That's a joke. This is a green screen. That, Sorry. You, yeah, you have, you have awesome backgrounds, man. I mean, you know, the other day, um, I'm not sure if it was on <laughs> you and Michael's stream or your stream. It was a whole house, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, either that's a green screen or that's really his house, which is awesome. Yeah, this is yeah, this is my yeah, house. This is there. the room that I'm actually filming in. Um, in no, I'm no, oh, this, awesome. this this is just the I don't know where I got this thing from. I don't know if it came with Streamyard or what happened, but it was there and I used it. And um, it was funny because the first time I ever went live. I was, you know, my friends were actually texting me friends that like knew me from afar and they knew my old house and they were like, dude, you moved your new place is amazing. You have a piano. It was all this neat stuff, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I don't know where I got that from, but I like, I like that one. There's this one here too, which is, um, this is a, a bedroom of a friend's house that I'm going to use that at some point when I know they're watching just to totally mess with them. But, uh, 
<laughs> then there's then there's the Costco. Wait, but at my house, what? <laughs> but, but I, f- I figured awesome. we would rock the we would rock the soundstage tonight, the empty photography area. Okay, for that Costco one that you just had up, I honestly thought you that was like your job, and like I I didn't realize that, that was a green screen, and you had that <laughs> as a uh, picture, and I'm like, wait, what? He does live streams at work. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. I'm just very, very still, and there's never any visitors. That's that's the catch. The right. funny thing is, is I, I got that from like a group text message. Someone was in a Costco showing me that there's nobody there, and they sent me that picture. And I was like, oh, cool. So so just so you know, if like you follow me on social or whatever, if you send me a picture, I there's a chance I might use it. Now, I'm not soliciting for horrible pictures because the like Tech 702 keeps sending me really weird uncomfortable photos i won't use those as my green screen but oh god <laughs> i can't imagine what that what that could be like <laughs> rock from tech what's up man how you doing how you doing oh man awesome sh- awesome start to a tuesday night stream um, I really don't go live at night because, um, you know, I live with my parents and it's just usually crazy. My parents are usually finishing up dinner or, you know, uh, doing the dishes or something. And it's always craziness upstairs, which you can always hear. Like the other day, um, the, I'm actually going to upload a video right after the live stream. And recording this video and all you could hear was my dad's footsteps back and forth back and forth back and i'm like it took me at least 10 times just to get one clip for this video and it's just like really (laughs) so i usually do it in the morning when i'm home alone um you know i mean i usually don't get uh too many people on the screen but i i try to work around it i mean i try to get people um, from my social media to come on and, you know, things like that. But I'm telling you, it, it, it's a change. And I, I, I maybe I'll start doing it again once things calm down. And I don't know, man. But let's talk about this uh, iPhone 12 that uh, is coming. I've been hearing a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that I'm hearing – that it's going to have the um, iPhone 4 look. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's the iPhone 4. And um, that, that's awesome. What do, you, what do you guys think about it? I'm excited to see Apple delve into 5G, but they're not going to have the, allegedly they're not going to have the millimeter way of 5G, which is kind of lame. So at first I was, I, I figured it was too soon for them to, to do it and actually get a 5G device. And now that I hear that they're doing it without, you know, the millimeter wave, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of hacking. I'm, I'm excited to be able for, I mean, much like Apple, we'll be able to say we have a 5G iPhone. I'm excited for that because typically right. the proliferation of things, oh, this is probably a diatribe, but, you know, Android users typically will talk about how things came out first. You know, Face ID came out first on mm-hmm. Samsung versus Apple. But the reality of it is, is yes. Apple releases the stuff when it's good. Like, you know, I, I know everybody that had, I think it was like the S6 or whatever. And 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 Face ID just wasn't working well. I mean, it had it technically, but it wasn't working well. So then by the time yeah. it came to the iPhone, it was great. So I'm kind of looking at the same thing. It's like, all right, we've got 5G. I know we've got the S20 lineup this year. And, you know, you've got things that, that really can't focus. And then you've got the low end one that's actually like the best freaking device out of all the s20s but um i'm hoping that by the time yeah. the iphone gets it that will push mass adoption and then by next year they'll actually be able to get some real bandwidth with uh you know hopefully sub six and millimeter wave so i mean i'm, I, I'm gonna be honest with you and i was gonna make a whole like rant video out of this but i said you know what it, i'm probably just gonna squeeze it into this and i mean now that you mentioned about the whole 5g um I I think it's a, it's a cool idea. I mean, a, a lot of phones are going to get it. I mean, I know the Samsung lineup, uh, the S20 got it. And I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take for it to be available to everybody. 
Um, like currently, I don't think it's available to many people. Yeah. So it's just like, eh, you know. Okay. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that when you sell, when Apple sells more of, <laughs> when Apple sells more of them, <clears throat> that it will kind of, you know, it, it'll it. It's not necessarily going to like force the consumer adoption, but I, I hope that having more of them out there will at least put more pressure on the carriers to expand. And then, but I mean, it's going to make it a little bit faster. Really, the five G that Apple, that the iPhone is rumored to be getting, and I should just say for everyone watching this, first off, thanks by the way for watching us. But also, this is all rumor. Yeah, there is, there is, we are everything we're talking. Full disclaimer: this is all rumor mill. But the rumor says that. Um, There'll be no sub six or, or millimeter on iPhone 12 as of this time. But the real 5G right. that is going into the iPhone will at least be like the 4G that we were all promised. So you'll be able to get faster download speeds and faster, you know, network and stuff like that. So, and I, I look forward to that at least. I mean, it's something, it's something better than, than nothing. Yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. Um, you know, like I said, when it comes to 5G, I just don't know how many places are actually going to be um you know having it like a, where it's going to be available because right now it's not available in many places you know so i mean i i, I guess it just takes time to see where it's gonna go yeah you know um it was funny because you said michael's over there just cracking and i have an iPhone 4 right here. That that's it. That's it. And that, my I, I, honestly, my iMessages okay. still show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. iPhone 4 was one of my favorite designs ever. Like iPhone 4 was one of my first phones, smartphones, I should say. And I love that phone. Um, I honestly never used a case when I had that phone. Never. Um, just because I liked how it looked. Yes, I know I um, risked it with, because of, you know, the build and everything. But I, I didn't care at the time. You know, when I knew that I was going to go out and, you know, um, I was going to get you know, uh, either dropping it or whatever, I would have a, um, I would have a case on it. But if I was home, I was caseless. I, I didn't care, you know. Okay, this here. Okay, for uh, anyone who, for anyone who is um, moderator, don't worry about this person. This is probably one of my friends just joking around with me. They've done it before, so I'm just I'm just gonna tell you right now. <laughs> wow. They say you know you've made it when you have haters. Oh. You know, that's that's the thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. We had oh, someone weird in our man. stream last week what too. A... They could be they could be stalking any one of us. I think that's it's Michael. Strange. Yeah. Because hey. Um, we had this, like, I can't remember what their name was that they used, but it yeah, was like the technical the... lurker or something like that. It was, yeah, and it was just in the chat and it's random. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was there. I saw that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, <sighs> so what, what did you like of... most about the iPhone four? Uh, not, not to interrupt you, but you were saying that that was your favorite phone of all time. And you, I mean, you appreciated yes, the design yes. of it, I assume. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I really loved the design of it. I wasn't a fan of the, what was it, the 30 pin connector? Yeah. At the time? Yeah, that yeah. wasn't, that wasn't my favorite. I mean, to be honest with you, I went through like four or five of those ch chargers. Like, they yeah. broke so easily for me. It's not even funny. Like, honestly, it actually got stuck in my phone while charging one time. And I went to go Same pull time. it out, and the water just came out, and 
that connector stayed in. I'm like, what the heck? And it took me forever to take it out, too. <laughs> I had to go with a knife and everything. I never understood Those that. Those are the days, I'm telling it, you. It was, <laughs> it was proprietary, and it was huge. Like, it was this giant, this giant, inconvenient, yes. wide thing with 30 different points of failure, you know, as far as I was concerned. And yeah, you're right. The latches were finicky, and that was the best part, is if you didn't buy the OEM Apple one, like, there were some good third parties, but... Uh-huh. Like Griffin was okay, but if you go, but then Griffin figured out you could make like cheaper ones. Well, the cheaper ones would get stuck in that exactly the same problem. It was like they'd have crappy latching, and then you'd have this thing stuck in your phone. And it's like when they invented lightning. You know, they they <laughs> I have seen a lightning plug get stuck, but it was someone got the someone got water in their phone, and there's actually ball bearings in there, and one of them got uh, rusty. I won't say moist because I know that I know that Michael doesn't like that word, just like any part of the female <laughs> internet that might be watching. But um, so uh, the balls yeah, got, the yeah. balls got moist and then they stuck where they were. And when you, the, uh, when they inserted the rigid metal plug, it, you know, couldn't pull out. And uh, that was the issue with the only time I ever heard of an issue ever with lightning prior to that. <laughs> My call, you guys aren't even gonna... typing anything in the chat. Um, so, <laughs> Well, any- oh, man. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, yeah, but the, the thing is that was one of the things that, that they were supposed to be combating with the lightning is that it was easier to, you know, pull it out and put it back in on like that 30 pin that just would, would stuck and get stuck. And there was, Yeah. The only way I can even charge that phone is the iHome. I have one of those iHome speakers that has the pop-out dock where you push it in and it pops out from the front of it. Where oh. I charged it and you had like an app that came with it. And when you put the phone on and the app was running, it would... Um, Well, the app would auto-launch, but then it had different like a timer, an alarm... You could play your music through it. It was weird because Apple usually doesn't let third-party companies access that much of their system. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's right. I do remember. I think I had a iHome and a JBL, a JBL thing that like both had that 30-pin connector. That thing And that thing was so freaking fragile. That was so weird. Like, you think about it now. Would any... I mean, technology's obviously changed, but would anybody buy a phone with that... Get stupid apparatus attached to the bottom of it now. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I mean, you look at like even micro USB. I think micro USB now gets plenty of hate. I don't, I, I mean, there are still things that are sold with micro USB, but I'm a snob and I try to not buy them just because we could do better. We can do better as a country. And right. if you vote for me in 2020, right. it's going to be USB C on everything except for the next iPhone because. <laughs> I need to give Jason C something to complain about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's my next question to you guys. Um, now I've heard that it wasn't going to change and it is going to change. What do you, what do you guys think about that? Do you guys think that it's going to go to USB C or stay as lightning? I'm waiting to see if Michael takes this one. Uh, I think that we're going to see it. It's it. So the next iPhone will be lightning. And I do not think that we will ever see a USB-C iPhone. Sadly, I think that they will go from lightning over to portless. Quite honestly, I think Apple views the USB-C as being for computing devices and multifunction and all that stuff. And if they yeah. enabled it on iPhone there, there's a space issue because you're going to have to fit a technically a, a larger plug. It's got larger uh, interior dimensions than the Lightning does. So you would have to do that. Mm-hmm. You'd have to adapt it to standards. And then you'd have to have all these people dealing with sticking random crap into the iPhone and the iPhone generating a million different messages for it that it doesn't support or it does support it because there's current restrictions and all these other things. So I think that Apple's just going to skip by it and go straight into a portless design that will give them more freedom to design something that is... Uh, beautiful, I guess I'll say functional over form perhaps, but 
And and I am glad to hear that Jason does agree with me. They will go portless. They will never go USB C. And then Mike will remind us that they already went USB C. But yes, that's an iPad. It's different. They're trying to replace computers with the iPad. So and, yeah. No, I, I, think I, they I completely did it for agree. The, exactly. uh, they did it because they were thinking ahead when they were going to introduce this magic keyboard. And yeah. the idea of, well, we're going to offer an additional port. If they were both lightning, seems kind of pointless because... Like, what are you going to do? You're going to charge through one, and then I guess you would use a lightning to like a lightning adapter for the other one. Like, I mean, I guess you could do the same thing you do with USB-C. You use something like, you know, lightning to VGA like this or lightning to HDMI or whatever. But here's what I'm wondering. Will Apple do the move that they did with the iPads since we're expected to be seeing at least four iPhones with the next iPhones and have like two iPhone 12s or maybe they'll have them just called the iPhone and they'll have two different sizes so you'll have the iPhone five and a half and the iPhone five, uh, six point one and then you'll have the iPhone pro models mm -hmm. and they would go lightning on the regular models and they would go USB C on the pro model like they did with the iPads um only reason I would say that is Offering more storage on the pro iPhones, perhaps, and keeping the introductory level iPhone cost down by not bumping the storage up as much. Similar to what they did with the iPads. Um, so you have somebody who is able to go out and buy let's say they come out with a new iPad next year because you have the 2017 iPad. Um, they come out with a 2021, the iPad 2021 or whatever. The type of person who buys that is buying something because they want the newest thing, but they don't need the Pro model. So then with the iPhone, they could do the same thing, similar to what we kind of seeing what they did with the SE this time around. And... The next transition for the SE, if they go, if they continue in the pattern that they do, would have to look like the current iPhone like 10, 10s, 11 series, in order to keep that trend, which is gonna look like pretty similar to the next update in iPhones, anyways. So I'd be curious to see if we would see them do base level iPhones because they, one of the leaks was LTE models and then 5G models on the only on the upper end of the Pro series. <clears throat> and part of that's battery life. Cuz you know, a 5 and a half inch display or whatever 5.8 inch display Unless they're planning on making that thing super thick. I don't know how they would. I mean, they already get pretty good battery life, but throwing 5G in there and knowing that the next level processors are going to get even faster, they're stepping up to 5 nanometer. and So the other thing that would do is you buy a normal iPad or an iPad mini and you buy a base level iPhone, you get the newest, you can carry one charger because they're both lightning, but you buy an mm -hmm. iPad Pro and you get the Pro level iPhone, you can carry one charger because they're both USB-C. And then maybe after that we would see the transition of either portless iPhone or they all go. See, I think that's a weird insertion for Apple to do like a that late in the game where they're trying to move towards getting getting rid of ports and having that. I mean, unless unless their play is they're going to go for like a super high end phone that doesn't have ports and it's like the Air. It's like the original MacBook Air. It's like 
basically useless, but it has no ports. Um, I mean, I totally, yeah. I see where you're going, but I don't think that they would, that they would insert something into the line this close to it leaving. It's my thought. I don't know that they'll ever go portless though, because how are they going to do data transfer? Um, and because as they're adding better cameras and as they're getting higher bit rate audio and higher bit rate video and things like that and 4K60 and everything, um, AirDrop still has its limitations. Um, and then also the problem with AirDrop is if you have an iPhone 12 and I have an older iPhone or an older iPad, it's limited by my Wi-Fi speeds. Yes, wired is still limited, you know, but USB, USB-C, even the early ages of it is better than lightning Lightning only goes up to USB 2 speeds. Um, but. I mean, I think AirDrop is going to get faster as they add in some of the later gen. I mean, I think they, they have that. That's a you're absolutely right. That's a problem that Apple has to solve because while they want to push consumers to sharing content like iCloud and all that stuff, you're not going to have all these made on iPhone commercials with people out there waiting for things to push up and pull back down to iCloud. I think that once the consumer, you know, captures a captures media or does something to insert a media element into their photo album, they're still going to need to have a way to, to share that quickly and to put it onto another device uh, without the iCloud share. So I, I would assume that you're going to see them do something with like a Bluetooth Wi-Fi handshake. I mean, kind of what they're doing now with AirDrop. I guess I'm saying, I think they're going to make AirDrop faster, but that probably also won't be a major priority of the portless device is my thinking. I mean, imagine imagine being able to take you at like my, I mean, I would love to be able to take my iPhone and just, you know, insert USB-C into one, into the iPhone, insert USB-C into the, into the, tablet and then just magically have it sync. I mean, you can, you could in theory do that now though with USB-C to lightning. So. Yes. It's just still kind of, but it slow. doesn't really, but it, yeah, but it, it's, I was going to say it's actually slower. I think than airdrop. If you tried to, it is, I've tried. I was going to say, have I actually tried the, I think I tried it, but I thought it was broken. So I stopped and then I realized was airdrop was faster. Weird because even though the upload speeds here are so much slower, by the time I transferred the video from my iPhone to my iPad with Lightning, it had already actually backed up the video to iCloud and downloaded it over onto the iPad. That's how long it took because of the the USB 2 protocol that they use for the, the Lightning. So even though it's a USB-C port, it's the slower, older protocol. So I'm sitting there and I go to transfer and it was only like a five minute video. And I look and I realize, oh, it's already on my iPad and I didn't even click transfer yet um my so, theory so, on that would be that we would see that faster airdrop not in the iphone 12 but maybe the 13 or 14 and this would be why the iphone 11 is the first that they went with wi-fi 6 we still don't see Wi-Fi 6 on their laptops and on their iPads yet. Once they're on there, and once you've had iPhones for, I would say, it's got to be around three generations before we would expect it because the average, um, the average time that people are keeping their smartphones are, is 33 months, just shy of three years. So you need to have enough wow. generations that you're not thinking, well, somebody's going to have an older version of Wi-Fi that's going to affect their experience versus somebody who has a newer, especially if they're using a combination of like Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, because you're going to still have a bunch of people with, wi with Wi-Fi AC or Wi-Fi 5 and like Bluetooth 4.0 or 4.1 that 
are going to have not a good, ex- not the same experience, and Apple doesn't want that necessarily. I mean, they've you've experienced that with AirDrop so far, but if they're going to use that as a way, oh, we're going to get rid of some ports, and we're going to use this as our way of transferring, um, they're going to want it to be smooth for everybody. Um, well, I mean, you've used the um, you've used AirDrop on the new devices, right? On the you've yes. got. So you saw the directionality of the ultra wideband chip. Yeah. That I mean, I think it's interesting doing that with older phones because it's like it still works. It's just not as awesome. So yeah. I think that will be. But I mean, if for the I mean, if if people out there haven't tried it, um, that's I I, I blew me away the first time I did it because I totally forgot what it was and I was like, wait a minute, it's showing me who I'm pointing at and it's showing me a little arrow thing and it's doing all this amazing stuff. I think they'll just do the same thing to the newer devices. I mean, they'd put, and and then it's like, oh, well, hey, too bad you, you should have gotten this newer device. You should have gotten this, you know, because then everyone says, oh, it's too bad you don't have the new one. You should buy the new one. Even, I mean, now that I say this, I've had the SE. I haven't even tested it on the SE to see how fast AirDrop is. I need to, that is the thing I now need to do. Also, because I haven't really been using it for a lot of footage, but we won't talk about my SE. Not here. Not now. I don't want to insert that into this discussion. It, um, I think that maybe one of the things we'll see with um, like the air power, the updated version that they're working on, that they're finally fixed would be the use of the U1 chip placed in there. So um, you connect to that and it recognizes that your phone has that ability to recognize <coughs> proximity. And you set your phone down to charge and it's near your computer. And your computer recognizes and just transfers like it already does. Like you can already, you know, connect to iTunes wirelessly and backups and do some transfers and stuff. But that they are going to utilize that chip in more of their hardware. Um, and we'll see it. Uh, go I got I go, I go put in time out. I'm upset. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. I'm trying to take care of that. Yes. And I... I, <laughs> yeah, Apple Monster. So I don't want to, just so you know, what happened is something went crazy. And. No, you know, I, I, I saw. Being put I... in timeout by somebody. So I put him in timeout <laughs> so you could fix it. Which I didn't know you could put somebody in timeout that was in blue, but apparently you can. <laughs> so it was like, uh oh. Yeah, no, gonna... I. So. Uh, great. Oh, great. Michael, are you getting an iPhone 12 then? Or is that why you're not getting an SE? That's the question I have. I mean, I'd ask Apple Monster, but. I, I, I know. I don't know that. Um, so I'm kind of in one of those weird where now it's like I get an iPhone when I need to upgrade. Um, just because it's like you don't necessarily, especially now, I don't know that you're going to get that much better of an experience. Like from here on out, it's going to be things like oh, your apps will load faster, your images will process a little faster, and things like that. But they've thrown so much great technology into there already that it'll be like, oh, we'll give you more RAM so that things can, your images can process better, faster. We'll give you faster RAM, faster storage. We'll um, give you slightly better performance, but I don't think that... it's necessary for me to upgrade even every maybe two or three years. It might be, um, but we'll see because they could always come out and be like, guess what? We've given you night mode and video and night mode on all your cameras, including your front facing cameras. And 
we've given you storage speeds that are twice the previous storage speeds and all this stuff and um but even then it would be like unless you have maybe a 10 or a 10s and you held off on the 11 and now you're wanting to get the bump and you're doing a lot of night time photography and a lot of video and you want better video and low light and things like that then i could see but I feel like a lot of these companies are getting to the point where we kind of have almost like an apex of the technology where what more can they add other than just making things a little bit faster because everything's already so quick. And um, maybe add more. I think everything now is more in software experience. They pretty well, yeah. Apple kind of worked on getting their hardware down. They got their hardware down, then they yeah. added some software experience stuff as far as <clears throat> the um, AI and the computational and the nighttime photography and all that. And they're beating out even the pixel with a lot of their stuff. And the next step will be refining that portrait mode so that it doesn't do some of the wacky stuff that it does, like cutting off straws or like you try to take a picture of like a, a lollipop or a sucker or whatever and like the it will capture the sucker part, but like the, the bottom part of it gets cut off or like stems of flowers and all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, we'll see minor improvements mainly, but a lot of that's software based. And I feel like that's what we've gotten to that. Yeah. It's not really hardware so much but they limit it to the newer hardware so older hardware is capable of doing this stuff but in order to sell you the new stuff they're like nope you're not going to get night mode on like for example the se it has the same processor but we're not going to give you mm. night mode and um some of the things with see that having fewer lenses and restricting the type of portraiture mode on some of the can on some of them and things like that so See, that was the thing with me with the SE. I mean, yeah, I understand that um, not all the new technology uh, was going to be implemented on it. You know, I mean, obviously, it's a cheaper phone, so it's to be expected. Um, but I, now that I have the iPhone 11 and I've experienced everything with the camera and night mode and everything, I would not be able to go and purchase the iPhone SE and not have what I have with the with the iPhone 11 camera wise because um you know I, I I'm used to I'm already used to having everything um when it comes to like video recording and you know like I said taking night mode pictures I love taking night mode pictures now so I mean getting yeah. the iPhone SE for me I I it would just be a complete downgrade, complete downgrade. Um, now I'm not saying like a, you know, um, it's not a good phone for everybody else. It is a great phone, uh, nonetheless. If you're not looking for something in specific, you know, if you just want a, a phone for, you know, whatever reason, and you're not a tech fan that needs, you know the newer things every single year, um, then yeah, iPhone SE definitely is for you. Um, but if you're somebody that wants to experience everything um, that is that comes out every year, then yeah, you gotta, you know, uh, I'm trying to keep up with the chat in between. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going crazy myself between our private chat and the comment section. It's like, yes. I don't know where I'm going here. <laughs> well, well we, I, think, I think for the sake of my own sanity. So, so the Rockford tech thing is that that's just like the, like spammer fake account guy or whatever. And then media yes. is the real one. I yeah. assume. Okay. Yes. Right. So, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause so, I was like, what the heck happened? Like that's got the same logo and everything. So yeah, I, I, I was like, I need to handle this because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to, 
he was basically muting and restricting everybody. Yeah. Well, right. Cause it, yeah, but is that person isn't the mod anymore or whatever, right? That's been all resolved, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's all set. Okay. <laughs> um, so Corey Miller, which is one of my friends, uh says, let's see. iPhone I feel like iPhone SC the iPhone is the same every year except a little tweak. Which I mean <sighs> I guess it is. I mean, now that they um, they finally did a, a redesign and everything, yeah, it, it's just a you know a step up from last year. Um, now, let me ask you guys this: What do you guys think about iPhone doing upgrades every year? Do you think it should be like that, or do you think they should wait like a uh, two years or something? Um, to upgrade to something else. Because, I, I mean, like Corey Miller said, um, it, the iPhone is the same every year, except there's, you know, a tweak in battery, tweak in performance, tweak in camera. Um, you know, it, so what, what do you guys think? What, do you, what else do you guys think Apple could do to change it up for iPhone? I think that they should do it every year. They should continue to do it every year. I mean, I think an annual upgrade cycle, while while many will say, oh, it's, you know, it's too often because they're only making incre incremental upgrades. I mean, one thing, if they if they were to seriously go all out and like redesign the phone every year, it would cost, you know, twice or three times what we're paying for it. And then no one would really buy it. So, uh, I mean, if you, I think the, if you look at the S20 lineup, this year, you know, they, they went all in with trying to put that gigantic, you know, turtle thing on the back of it that takes a hundred times zoom in case you really like watercolor paintings that got wet. Uh, and then the focus issue and all that other crap on the S20 ultra for those who aren't sure what I'm talking about, but they put this gigantic imager array on mm -hmm. the back of that, that huge phone. And, you know, we all paid for it, of course, 1400 bucks, which, I think Apple, right, right. you'd see Apple doing similar stuff like that. Whereas instead, someone in the chat's going to come in and say, Apple already charges $1,400 for an iPhone. And that's because they they make the best phones around. And that's okay. But Right. And I might be trolling with that. But the um, but the thing is, I think if, if Apple really did a true re overhaul every single year, you would have phones that are way, 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 way too expensive. And it, it just, it's not realistic, but I think having the incremental changes is good because you're always, the thing is you're always going to have someone whose phone is three years old or they've, you know, okay. and, and they drop it and they smack it and it's 300 bucks to replace or, oh crap, I can get into this thing with this year's model. And this is your big paradigm here. You can go create a show off of it. Now there's with this year's model. It always means that there's a last year's model when you cycle it every year. So you can have the last year's model is always cheaper. I mean, look at the XR for the longest time. I think the XR is still floating around right, as like yeah. the next step up over an SE. The XR isn't the bad phone. It's it's not, I mean, I have one. It was my business line before I got the SE. I'm also the same guy that's excited that I have an SE now for my for my company, you know, my business line. But it's, it, it, you always have the good and the bad with that. You're always going to be knocking everything else down a hundred bucks or so in price. You know, they're all going to work their way down. And then you're always going to be getting, you know, the latest and greatest in terms of chip technology and battery technology. So I think it's okay for at least from my perspective where we're at right now. I don't I think stretching it out longer would be a bad thing for consumers because we we kind of need to keep it, you know, fresh, even if it's incremental changes. Now. We could right. talk more about why I think Apple, you know, jacks with people a little bit like the memory chart, you know, they 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 up their prices due to memory. They up their prices due to this. As a company, as a business, I understand the whole game is to get, you know, margin on products. You've got to be making money on the things that you're selling. That's cool. So when memory drops in price, you should correspondingly, you know, or sorry, when when you're making more money and then you're telling people it's because of the memory costs and that's sort of like the rumor that comes out, well, then you should also lower the prices for that stuff when it comes out or when, when the memory price, you know, returns to a little bit more normal. And Instead, they just come out with a new one because they're just coming out with a new one less than a year later, and then they make that one the same price for more memory. I don't know. That's a rant. I ran away. Michael, what do you think? Well, so, <laughs> so here's the problem with... I'm going to approach this from the side of what happens if you only update every two years. If Apple said 
starting this year, we're going to release a 2020 iPhone, but then the next time they update, they don't update till 2022, and then after that's 2024, and so on and so forth. So here's, a, here's an issue. I buy an iPhone in 2018, and 2020 comes along, and I'm looking, and I, let's say I only update every three years. I only get a new phone every three years. So um, I got one in 2018. 2020 comes along. I'm still not going to update. 2021 comes along. So in 2020, the iPhone 12 comes out. The iPhone 13 isn't coming out till 2022. So it's 2021. So do I buy a year-old phone? Or do I wait another year and buy the bumped up model? So one option is I wait another year and I get newer specs. The other option is I buy a device that's a year old and it's specced out and other companies aren't going to wait. So now Samsung and Google and LG and all these other companies are just going to step in and be able to say, well, we offer a much better device than the most recent iPhone because, you know, the most recent iPhone is a year old at that time. And Samsung drops right. brand new technology. Also, technology shifts so much that the 2020 iPhone is, pro is using technology that's been around for a year or two. We're whatever phones we get now is always old technology because they're only able to manufacture from what they have at the time that they're putting together the whole package, right? So they're only able to manufacture from the SOC that they're able to, ma to make, the RAM that's available, the glass that's available, um, the types of metals that are available, all those components at the time that they're constructing it. Well, technology changes so fast that in the, let's say, year that they've been developing that, there's already updated stuff. So you wait another year and it's going to be even further behind. And you wait another year and it's going to... And you're always going to um, wonder, do I, you know, do I wait or do I go with a year-old product? And, like you said, Chris... The price isn't going to drop because a year old phone is still the newest. So they can't drop it until another one comes out because if That's they true. drop it after a year, then the people who bought an iPhone 11 are going to be mad that they paid $1,450 for the iPhone 11 Pro Max 512 gig in 2020 yep. when the price drops. And then in 2021, when, or, and in 2021, when the next iPhone comes out and it drops again, it's going to be even worse. And I think there would be more of a drop because now your previous generation is not a year old. It's two years old when the new one comes out. And, also, and then how do they do that? So how do they um, price these things? The low end, essentially, when the iPhone 12 came out, if they went with that strategy, let's say they waited till next year to do the iPhone 12, then the iPhone 11, instead of it dropping by 100 bucks, they're going to drop it by $200, and then where's the price point for, um, like, they did last year, the 10R stayed around, and the 8 and the 8 Plus stayed around. So where do those go? You can't... You'd have too much price competition amongst your own product. And know where to price them. And you wouldn't even be able to offer as many devices with that direction. Because you'd you would essentially drop $200 off from a phone... And then what, the model that's lower than that drops $200 off and those are your two cheaper phones you can go because be below that's free, basically. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't...
put as much money back into for development. So I feel like the next year then if you're having to cut costs down because now the phone is a year old and you're not putting out a new phone and then two years later you got to drop it again instead of always having product that's at new prices even though they're not the top selling it's better to have it and have that money going into their coffers than to not have it as far as having money to reinvest and to create new product and things like that and also these are phones they're not like a pc or a computer where you can just like okay i can buy a new motherboard a new processor a new ram i can upgrade as things change it's a phone so your only option is to purchase the whole thing and the people that are doing that anyways is not their whole market but it's got to be enough of it that they're still producing these phones because otherwise if why would they why would they put all the money and the time into producing a fifteen hundred dollar phone and the expensive more expensive parts and things like that if they weren't making a decent amount from it um that's that's the direction that i kind of discovered how this whole thing works I don't disagree. Well, and they continue to have to manufacture old parts too for repairs. So not only are they working on meaning, making something that's whoa, that's been two years, so this needs to be a substantial jump. But they're having to continue making parts for a two-year-old phone over that time for repairs, which they do, but not as many because you <clears throat> have instead of you having to maintain parts from a two-year-old phone for three, four years, <clears throat> chances are in there you're going to have some people that are going to upgrade. Not everybody's going to be the people that keep their phones for three, four years. Some The reason that number is so high is you have people that upgrade every year, like you know Chris being on upgrade programs and things like that, like you've talked about. But you also have people that keep their iPhones for like, five six years there's people using the iphone fours and fives and sixes still and that affects that average number um pushing everything to the newer direction it also makes it um it actually it makes the phones cheaper too in a way because it would have they'd actually have to charge more to maintain over time because you buy a phone and you know the next one's not coming out for two years you're holding on to that thing apple's not making money off from it except for if they're going to offer services somehow or they're going to start charging for ios upgrades because um you know you're getting newer stuff in there um so well that's why i think like you know, the iPhone SE being referred to as a parts bin phone is kind of amusing because, you know, it's it's using a lot of parts. I mean, obviously, it's it's almost a one to one of like the iPhone eight, but there is still and the, even the assemblies of them are very, very similar. If you see them, you know, without their clothes on, but uh, it's like they just, you know, they inserted the same battery and then the different CPU inside of a inside of the eight. But, you know, that these I mean parts bin is not really true here because they're not literally sitting around. Also, they're not, I assure you, there aren't enough parts in supply chain today that have just been residual that are, you know, um, ending up happening to exist to make these things. I mean, these are like newly manufactured parts that they're continuing to make, to, to make because they're going to sell millions of these things. I mean, they're going to sell Jason C and tech 702 are going to buy them first and then everybody else will follow. It's my prediction. Well, and um, I don't know if you know this, Chris, but that the SE uses a different metal for the body. I was wondering about that. If it was, it's the, a different. It's the the, the the it's the seven series of the stainless steel instead of the like older like five or six that they were using the eight, and it has to do with um, 
it has to do with instead of using it, um, the pressure of 3D touch, since it's now long press, there um, and the and some other components of changing changes in iOS 13, they actually put a different um, it's a different metal. And aluminum, right? Mm-hmm. That's what okay. I meant. Yeah, you said stainless, but I was like. My I brain was. Aluminum. My brain was. The, the logo. I believe the logo is stainless. Or there's some. There is something that's stainless on it. But for those who are going to yeah. say there's no stainless used in it, but um, in yeah. different glass. Um, yes. The Touch ID is the newer, is the newest. You know, it's the same touch version of Touch ID that they had in the eight. But um, they had to throw in some things in there. It works faster. I I don't I. I mean I got. I I got to be honest. I was I really want to get it um just for the sake of um reviewing it for the channel and checking it out myself um but i mean right now the the place i'm at with you know money it just i I can't right now but i mean if i could i'd definitely get it um my my mom and i both have iphones my dad has a cheaper android um that um our company cricket sent to us um he he got the lg g7 think and that that's a story in itself and then he broke it so then when we switched they sent us phones my mom and i kept up our iPhones that we were using, and then he switched to the new Android. Um, I personally would like it if he would switch to an iPhone. Um, needless to say, he doesn't care. He doesn't, you know, um, he barely knows how to go on Facebook and all these other stuff. He doesn't, you know, care about um, all this new technology and, you know, going online. He doesn't do that stuff. All he does basically is call. Um, so much so that when he went to the store, of course, I was I was with him, but I was not. And he goes up to the clerk and goes, I need one of your simplest phones. Now, in his head, he's still thinking, oh, they're going to give me uh, another flip phone or, you know, something like that. And then they handed him the G7 thing, and he's like, don't you guys have flip phones? He, the guy goes, sir, you do realize what generation you're in. This isn't the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ouch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, Are you, uh, I'm in the background like, Really? You just asked for a flip phone? There is none of that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he, he's he's gotten used to the Android. Um, it, it's just, I'm so used to Apple and iPhones that when he asks me to fi- fix something, I have to Google some st- stuff because I don't know how to <laughs> handle that phone. Like, I it's mean, like when anyone asks me a question I about barely Windows. Knew yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just like I, I can't I can't do it. Um you know, I mean my brother in law and my sister hate Apple. They cannot stand Apple for whatever reason. So it's like if you ask them something, it's just like they don't know either. And it's the same thing with me. When it comes to Android, I don't know. I, I wish I did, but you know I, I I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to bet there's a... no. I mean that that's in the trash now. But uh, if you if I was a YouTuber like I don't know four or five years ago, maybe yeah. Uh, but not now, thank God. <laughs> but <laughs> so you're saying that there's not a VHS no. library? No, no. Okay. <laughs> No, I I used to have the the shelf behind me used to be full of VHS, but now I got 
uh, games and DVDs, so that got taken away. Thank God. <laughs> and and also pictures um, of Michael. You know, we're, we're... <laughs> Whereas Michael just has box. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're we're semi in in the past, um, you know, but we're we're getting there. We're getting there, you know. Um, I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for me becoming a YouTuber, um, I probably wouldn't like be into interested in like having an Apple watch and, you know, having AirPods and all this other stuff. Um, but like, I, 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 since I've become a YouTuber, I, I like to see the new stuff. Like I've always been, um, interested in phones like as a kid my family would have as a kid with a family with simple flip phones and all that people would have questions and come to me and be like oh how do I do this how do I you know delete a contact or you know simple little things but I would do it for them and what 10 10 12 years later here I am as a youtuber you know what I mean and um you know, it, it's little things like that that um, made made me come and you know it, share my experience and you know uh, talk to other people and stuff like that. You know, because I, I it, it got to a point where, okay, you know what? I'm sick of having to help everybody and answer questions. I'm just gonna make videos, and whenever somebody has a question, I'll just send the video to them, and that's that. You know, that's why I always say, if you guys have any questions or anything, leave in the comment section or join me on my social media and just tell me that way. And, you know, I mean, I don't get too many comments or questions or anything, but, you know, that's why I say that because, you know, I, I, I like to share my experience and share what I know. That's good to share. It's good to have that kind of uh, the willingness to share and then the ability to do so. That is rewarded well yeah, in this community. Definitely. Definitely. 14 by so, 22. That's an impressive size. Right. That's an impressive size. Yes. Go ahead, Michael. You were you were gonna say something else. Oh. Stomped on you. Oh, I was gonna say it was funny because he said something about having boxes on the shelf for phones I don't own. Actually, all of those are boxes for phones I have owned at one point or another. Yeah, same here. Um, Same here. Okay, the only the and... only box, okay. the only box that is, that's up here that I didn't own the phone was the iPhone four. That was one of my friends that um, surprised me last year for my birthday and said, "Hey, here's a box. Put it on your shelf." You know, I mean, because like I said, it was one of my favorite phones, and I I kind of wish to this day I kept it, but. I was originally with Verizon at the time and we we had the the whole contract so if you like wanted to buy a new phone you had to trade in the other one and you know all that uh let's see No, I didn't what? sell them without the boxes. Most of them I were trade-ins, and the stores don't want your boxes. Yeah, yeah. What would you say is your no, favorite box? Wants boxes anymore? Mine. Um, this one. It's long, skinny, and white, just like me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that's very good, and that's also good. <laughs> It's good that um, I'm waiting for Tech 72 to say that's one box that you didn't give away. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. I actually moved it because um, I had everything set up and I had the watch box like this, but with the lights, it's very bright and I didn't want everybody like... just staring at the background because you have this big white, like, box, reflective box just sitting there. Mm. All right, so we we completely got off track here. We did. Um, bye. 
<laughs> I don't know how, but we did. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys, uh, going back to iPhone 12 details and and stuff. Um, I'm not sure. I think I read it online. Here's my phone. Um, what the storage options and pricing was for it. Do you guys remember? Uh, yeah. yeah. Starting at like 699, I think. And uh, going up to, or, well, it depends if you mean the sort of pro ones or not. I know uh, uh, because Brownlee had a really, really great graphic that he generated himself the other day, 100% on his own that I saw that had some uh, uh, pricing. I saw that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I saw that. That was funny. I saw that. Oh my god. That was a little that wild. That was that Yeah, that was really wild. Yeah, they're they're supposed should... to be saying so the I, I saw one rumor. This can't be the right one now. Hang on. This has gotta be hang on. I gotta find the right one now. I'm trying I just to find found... it myself here. Oh, I got it right here. Um, oh, there's so a... it is. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm off. I found uh, last year's iPhone prices, which aren't going to surprise many people. Yeah, true. Um, here it is. All right. So, according to Front Page Tech iPhone 12 5.4 inch with A14 OLED 5G and dual dual camera. Um, a, a, yeah, Coney. No, nah, that doesn't matter. Um, aluminum body, smaller notch, 649. Uh, the 6.1 inch A14 OLED 5 camera dual. Um, 5G dual camera, 749. A14 smaller notch OLED 5G triple cam and LiDAR sensor, 999. The stainless steel body smaller notch, uh, 6.7 OLED 5G triple cam is 1099. That's so a weird, a weird price jump though. Like two hundred and fifty dollar. There's a space in the middle there. But, um, like I said, I'm speculating that what that's all about is that we're gonna see that the lower two price models are gonna start at sixty four gigs again. And that the up yep. to they'll finally start out at 128. That they'll do a 128, 256, and 512. Um, and uh, then um, the decision will be. Michael, let me just let me, you... let me just say this. Um, if you're still on, I will send you the link so you can come on for a little bit. Go ahead, Michael. Sorry, I just wanted to let Miles know I'm sending him a link. That that would leave a gap. So the thing would be either pay $100 to bump up storage between the low, between with the lower two or to go from the 5.4 inch to the 6.1 inch. Uh, or, yeah, you would pay for either storage or screen size with those, but then there would be a gap in the middle so that people aren't going, well, I can just buy and get the same storage, um, because then that would essentially make the dual camera 6.1 inch option that would leave enough space to have the main plus two $100 jumps for storage and not put it at the same price point as the 
Pro models. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Because I think that's a weird, uh, a weird thing to do. Like, okay, you can either get, especially if they do price difference, if they um, do storage difference, if you have them close enough together because I would have a feeling that if you were to say well you can get a 6.1 inch with two cameras and it's 849 well 749 to start off with you can pay $100 more and get the 128 gig storage option or you can pay $50 more than that get 128 gigs of storage and get the pro model with three cameras that would not be a good price point um they need more separation and they jump more of a jump in between there i don't think so i think that they'll do like the six the six one twelve it'll probably be i'm guessing it'll do like a like a fifty dollar jump to do to double the storage which would be eight hundred so for the eight hundred to thousand model actually no i guess to support that it would need to be a hundred dollar jump so it goes 749 to to 849 and then you've got like a 150 dollar jump i mean i yeah yeah i guess i i guess i see what you're saying i mean the pro what else is the pro going to bring to the table other than lidar and and the, the third lens right is that basically where you're you're saying that that there's no chance for them to to push um, that break, I think, I think that having the price difference be a hundred or a hundred and fifty dollar jump from like the top storage of that six point one inch twelve to the twelve pro of the same size, that um, I kind of also wonder if it will be more RAM because just because. The iPads yeah. they didn't do any they didn't do anything with, uh well okay so the iPads they did, you know last the 2018 iPad in order to get six gigs of RAM you had to get the top of the end one, then this year they did six gigs on all of them, so with having that lidar and the trip and uh, I have a feeling that what we're gonna see is the Pro models will get a jump, so that they'll bump up the RAM with those and the base model, the twelves will just have the four gigs that they did this last time. I'm, I'm observing the analogy of tech 702. <laughs> They're trying to set a phone at every price. There only needs to be three, four, 400, 800, 1300. It's, it's actually, it's not, it's not entirely wrong, but <laughs> They really are trying to sell a phone at every mm. single price tier. Um, yeah. 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 But I mean, if you do the smart thing and um, you trade in your phone for a new one, get it. I mean, technically, technically you don't get it cheaper, but at least you get the option to pay monthly. True. I liked the analogy. I don't know if you saw this analogy that Ray, uh, Renee Ritchie gave when the new 13-inch um, MacBook Pros were announced. And there was the whole chaos. I haven't his, seen his videos in so long. The, I've been trying to catch um, up with everybody else. The 8th gen CPUs until you went up to the like $1,400 price point and then they went to the 10th gen was that Apple was actually marketing it almost as two separate lines. So the the twelve ninety nine and lower priced models and it, that processor was kind of its own line and then the fourteen ninety nine, seventeen ninety nine up options were a separate new tier. Um but I could see that Apple would do that with the 12s, too. So, essentially, they would be releasing new models, but they would basically be in two separate tier 
So, because they're all set to have OLED finally. Um, but basically, instead of having the price points be so close between the uh, the twelves and the twelve Pro, they need to have that separation in there. Because if you think about it, for example, this last year, um, that's what they did. The eleven came out, and you had six forty nine. What you the... had six ninety nine. Okay. They they had six ninety nine, seven forty nine, and eight forty nine. So the seven forty nine of the eleven was double the storage of the ten R at the same price point. That the highest price point eleven was still. 849 or $150 less than the 11 Pro Max yeah. base storage. Mm -hmm. So they need to maintain that somehow. Because otherwise, some people might just say, well, I'll forget about the storage. If I can pay the same price or pay another $50 more and get the Pro versus the non-Pro, especially if it's things like two cameras versus the three and the lidar sensors and the and if it's a up in in ram and things like that um people will do that yeah don't mind me i'm just thir i'm thoroughly amused at the the stupid chance timing before welcome miles by the way <laughs> yes miles miles joined and then went away and then Mike was like, get rid of him. And by the time I went over to realize what he said, he had just fallen out. So my Mac just blew up. <laughs> oh, great. Yes. That's all we need. Jeez. It's just, it's just smoking. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I get a fire that's... hydrant, would you? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh, man. That's a bad idea. You shouldn't put water on your computer. Anybody that's watching this, if it catches on fire, do not put water on your computer. <laughs> yeah, don't. Fire. <laughs> you need to use a uh, correct. I mean, but I mean, if you're stupid enough and you, and you want to try it, go fire ahead. Fire extinguisher don't play that's designed for, for electrical <laughs> fires, not water. Yeah. <laughs> also... If you're drinking, do not try to pour your alcohol on the fire either. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Too much. Uh, so is there anything we left out from the iPhone 12 talk um, so that you I guys can think like about? I also kind of am speculating on this one, and I think that some of the information kind of alluded to this, but um, is faster wireless charging um, and faster wired charging as well, because, you know, Apple's now, well, technically three generations into faster wired charging. When the 10 came out, they officially did the 18 watt charging, and then um also right. brought the wireless charging so that we'll see just like we were talking about earlier and how apple tends to kind of wait until things are perfected well now these companies are all offering crazy like um for example um my mate 30 pro has 40 watt wired charging but it also does 27 watt wireless charging and it has like 10 watt reverse wireless charging so literally the reverse wireless charging on this thing is higher than the wireless charging that my iPhone can even support. Because it only, I think the iPhones only go up to, was it seven and a half watts, I think, with the wireless charging? Is there, that's their fast charging? Because everybody yeah. else's is 10 watts. Yeah. Um. So I think that's what we're going to see is that they'll finally bring some faster wireless charging. Um, probably won't be anything like we've seen this year. Like I, w I wouldn't be surprised if we see it jump to maybe 15 watts 
I don't think we're going to see a, like a 30 watt wireless, 30 watt wired like OnePlus did and some of these other. It's proprietary. Wow. It's too hot um, still. And people are even having issues using it with their own companies. Like I know people like Xiaomi, you have to buy the Xiaomi brand. Huawei, you have to buy their brand. OnePlus, you have to buy their brand. It has to do with um, how the, the charger um, is set for the fans to operate. So if you put another company's device right. on there, it just operates at normal, like slow Qi charging speeds. So, um, but I think that's also a problem with this wireless charging in general, because um, let's say I want to use a wireless charger and I have my Mate 30 Pro and I put it on a Huawei charger and my wife comes in and she has another phone. Let's say she has like the one plus eight pro that uses wireless charging, even though the Huawei one is only 27 Watts in the wow. And one plus can support up at 30 Watts. It's only going to charge at like the slower. I think it's like five Watts or seven and a half Watt standard cheese be because they have their proprietary technology so you have to buy unlike previous chi charging where basically if your phone could support that speed it just worked and it wasn't so substantial that it needed um fans necessarily to kick on and it didn't need all these right um specific arrangements of the coils and stuff like that so um but 15 watts is fast enough, but it's not in the range in which you're going to blow up your phone. Yeah. I mean, it'll still add some heat. I mean, you'll, you'll, <clears throat> there'll have to be some good thermal management in there. That's the thing. You know, it's, you've got to have the ability to dissipate either a large surface area or some, you know, really conductive metals or something to, to move it. Cause 15 watts is, I mean, I, I'd love to see how the OnePlus does it. I assume OnePlus does it with two coils, and that's why it's proprietary. But, um, but yeah, 15 mm. watts is... That's warm. But I don't have a 15-watt charger, so I can't... I, I'm curious now. I, I'm curious to what you guys think. Um, I mean, this is going a little bit into the future. But if Apple were to... Like, let's say they remove the port completely. Um, how, how would you think they would go about, you know, giving us a charger, uh, like a wireless charger or something? Would, do you think that they'll put something small, um, like a smaller version of air power or, you know, something like that um, in the box or is, have to sell it separately? So I've already seen mock-ups on this, by the way. Um, and from what I've seen, um, well, I guess I can say, cause yeah, it's public anyways, but, um, from what I've seen, the first version of it is pins. So yeah. you can use a charging pad for multiple things, but essentially it's still a cable, but instead of having an internal port, it's three pins on the side of the phone, which also is so it doesn't get in the way of, like, the speakers and other things. But here's my question. How are you going to connect this thing up to any external display if there's no ports on it? Um, like, you're going to have to use AirPlay, and then that's limited. Um... So right. that's my question. And like charging on a plane, how are you going to do that? You're going to have to carry. But I think that's why the idea of the pins, because you just use right. a normal USB cable, you plug it into the charging port or you have a charging block or whatever the plane, you know, has yeah. and it snaps up like their magnetic connector. um, Like they have for their, if I could reach it. It's way around the corner. But like my 2013 MacBook Air has the magnetic MagSafe connector. Um, I think you're going to see portals. a battery case. That, that's what I think you'll see. I think you'll see. So Apple has been 
first they came out the battery case a couple of years ago. They came out there for like the iPhone seven or really the six S and then the seven. And then mm. they took a break with the eight and then they did it for the XS, then the XS max. And then it was like, they slow rolled eventually out to having battery cases for everything. And now they're adding functionality. If you noticed what the latest round of them. So they have the camera button built into the battery case on the iPhone 11 pro which launches it from a cold start. So I think you're going to see them take that into the next level as they move portless. There will be the pins. I, d- I don't disagree with that. I totally think that's how it will work. And there will be a snap-on cable for you know times that you want to use the device in a tethered fashion or whatever. But I think that the as, if you get the charging case or the battery case, that I'm trying to think of what, what else they would have, but I would expect that you'll see a port on that. And that might... I, I wonder, I'd love to know if that would be USB-C or not, because that would make way more sense if they're not doing anything else with Lightning. Um, but I think that's that's what you'll get. You'll get some sort of accessory case that does things to it, kind of like the Magic Keyboard does for the iPad Pro. I think that's, as Apple moves towards and pivots towards wearables, I think you'll get something like that, an accessory like that. That could be a way to do it anyway. Mm. And it would work really well to charge the case really fast. If you had it instead of your case using like Qi charging for your phone, which is still quite slow. Yeah. Although, like I said, if they're going to bump that up, it would still be good. But if you're there and you need to charge the case up and your phone, and instead of like taking your phone out of the case and plugging in two separate chargers, you'd essentially have pins on the inside of the case that are making that connection to the phone. And whatever that speed could handle, which could potentially be the full speed of the fast charging for the phone, and then they have that same speed for the case, you just plug in one cable, and let's say your phone is a has a um, 4,000 milliamp hour battery in it, and the charging case has, I don't know, 4,000 as well, it would take twice as long as charging your phone, but... If your phone now takes like an hour to charge, that's basically the same time as most iPhones take <laughs> to completely charge now, just the phone. Yeah. I mean, the new, well, yeah, it's interesting that the, the battery case, um, if you plug the battery case into the iPhone 11 Pro and you plug it all into like a 45 watt USB-C charger and then char- uh, plug in USB-C to lightning, it'll charge the whole, it will still charge the whole thing in, I think it's like 90 minutes. It'll do it because it charges them both at high rate. So it, I think it does it, mm. I think it's like 32 watts or something that it'll take to both of them if they're both dead. Fun fact. And the, the other thing too is we have to think about is interfacing with non-Apple products that would give a good way to still, because otherwise if your buddy doesn't have an iPhone and they've gotten rid of all the ports. You can't use AirDrop if your buddy doesn't have an iPhone. And if he has a Windows machine, how are you? So how are you going to transfer video that you shot or <laughs> photos to somebody that doesn't have? And I feel like they would get into some legal issues too. If it literally got to the point where you couldn't use it without, like, there was no option. Um. Because if you're going portless and Apple has to control the thermals, then now there's no third-party companies. Like, we have third-party lightning accessories, and we have all this stuff. I feel like there'd be some legal issues with this if if they don't still have some sort of physical option somehow. Because not everybody has Bluetooth in their car, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have adapters right True. now, and you have, although you can get wireless Bluetooth adapters that are super cheap that go from Bluetooth. Yeah, they're to like ten bucks. Three point five. Um. But I would actually expect that the iPad so, to go portless okay, before we see um, the iPhone do it. Yeah. All right. So Corey Miller. Is asking so I, if I want a bigger screen, should I get the iPhone? Uh, should I get the 11 to hold me over and deal with LCD screen? Okay, I just saw that 
Chris answered that. Oh, question. you you can go speak away to it though. I just I I was only throwing out my two cents in there, but um. So and I missed that you actually said we're gonna, we're going to end. So if anyone has any questions, let us know. And then I went and typed in the answer because I was aloof and not paying attention. So go go ahead and fire away with that one. I mean, I threw my two cents in, but there's four of us here. I know Miles has the answer. Yeah, Miles, what's your answer? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Get to have a dirt cheap. I mean, I mean, like I said, like I've said before. I mean, like I've said before, it's all what you're looking for. I mean, in my perspective. In my perspective, it's all what you're looking for um, and budget, what you want to spend on a phone. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, you kind of seem like the person that kind of wants the new technology and, you know, a good camera and all that. So, if you don't want to spend, like, a lot, a lot, like, with the Pro Max... The iPhone 11 does perfect um, photography. Um, the only thing that that the iPhone 11 lacks is basically the um, what's it called telephoto uh, lens. That's it, you know, which makes the image a little bit better. You know, I mean, I have the iPhone 11, and you've seen pictures on. Um, like Facebook and stuff, um, you know. So I, I I think that iPhone 11 is good for what it is. You know, battery is really good. Um, it's just like I said, what you want for in a phone. You know, what you're actually looking for um, in a phone. I myself, you know. Um, Go ahead, Mike. Go. We're only about five months away from the announcement of the next iPhone as at this point. Um, so it would be, are you going to be happy with what's currently out there? And you're just going to use that. Or since you've been using what you already have, yeah. you got that, I would hold off. Like Chris said, I would just wait. Because yeah. the thing is, even if it has a broken screen, I lived with an iPhone 10 for like, uh, let's see, how long was that? Six, seven months, something like that, with a crack down the screen because it still functioned. It didn't have any sharp edges. I yeah. wasn't worried about dropping it in water, and it that would be the only concern. Are you outside in the rain a lot? Are you, you know, if it's broken, then, but even then, you know, you might be better off spending the $300 to get the screen fixed than buying a whole new phone at that point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know. It's yeah. like $200 to get a screen fixed. Uh, if the back isn't damaged and they just replaced the whole thing. Yeah, I know some people. Only, I know. That's the only thing I don't like is... The, it was just the glass on mine was broken, but Apple doesn't give you any choice. It's right. the whole thing. They don't just take and replace the glass. They replace the digitizer, everything. They just pretty much um, give you a new Face ID and everything is in there. So they basically give you a new phone, and then they'll take and repair the old one. And then they'll sell it. <laughs> and they'll sell it, yep. I thought I heard somebody making a phone call. Sorry. <laughs> it's messing with me. I was like, wait, did I accidentally dial something? That happens often. No, that that was me. That was me by accident. Oh, okay. um, I feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to have to go. So, um, guys, I really, really appreciate you guys coming. Thank you so much for coming on uh, with us tonight. I really hope you enjoy yourself and come back 
to speak with us. And um, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. If you guys have any questions, always leave it in the comment section below, and we can um, go back and look um, to answer it for you guys. And we will see you guys in the next live stream. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. All right, man. See you guys soon. Peace.